Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everybody? It's Rashid signing in. Hopefully, everybody's having a good evening. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. I'm waiting for my guys to check in right now. So we'll let a, a few people get into the chat. Again, welcome. This is the Barbershop, the men's panel. I got a great uh, group for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So I think it'll be interesting. I got my uh, Ready to Love alum, some of the guys that was on the show with me, some of the OGs and some of the guys that came after us. So I think we'll have a good conversation up until this point. Our conversations have been great. Thank you, everybody, for all your support, watching us, checking us out. Uh, we greatly appreciate that, and we look forward to having this chat. So I'm going to let y'all get in here. I'm going to let some of the guys jump in as well, and uh, we'll get started here shortly. Uh, I want to thank you guys for all your support for the channel. If you don't already, please like and subscribe. Turn on those notifications to help our analytics so we can bring keep bringing you guys content. And so how many of you out there watched uh, me and Simone's little short uh, travel um, a road trip uh, live that we did? Uh, when was that? That was this week. What's today? My days are all messed up. It's been crazy. That was Monday. Yeah, that was Monday. So if y'all saw that, uh, I'd love to hear your comments on that. Um, we were driving across country. Um, we went to uh, Pittsburgh. Simone was getting recognized. And now we're out. I'm actually on location. We're out here in Vegas right now um, doing some business stuff. Uh, so we got back to Houston and we're out here in Vegas. So um, coming to you on location from Vegas, Nevada. All right. So let's get these guys going here for just a second. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Oh, also for our uh, our review. Normally, our review is up from last week's episode of Ready to Love um, Potomac. Unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties, the internet stuff, and we were out of town. So the editor had some issues getting that up. So we're going to try to get something out to you uh, either tonight or tomorrow evening. Um, definitely get it to you before the next episode comes. So bear with us on that. Thank you for your patience. All right. So uh, we're going to get these guys in. I got a few guys uh, that's ready to go. We're going to we're going to get you guys in here. I don't want y'all waiting too much longer. Thank you so much. All right. Here we go. All right. I got another guy just signed in. All right. Give us a few minutes and we're getting ready to get it rolling, y'all. Not a few minutes. I'm sorry. All right. We're going to start our countdown. Be right back. What's up? What's up? What's up? All right. What's going on, guys? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's up? What's up, Sheik? The car what got. Up? What's going on, Jimmy Jones? <laughs> it's all good. I got doing, my head. Man? I got my headphones in, like you said, sir. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. What <laughs> up, Brian? Brian? You need me to put mine in? If you have something, that's great. All right. All right. Here goes uh, AJ. Just signed in. All right. We got AJ in here. Cool, man. Hey, thank you guys so much, man. I know y'all busy. This daylight saving times, man, for y'all to get home 7, 8 o'clock. You at 8 o'clock. Where you at, Jimmy? Okay. So I appreciate y'all joining us, man. It's all good, man. Anything for you, bro? Oh, man, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. So we're going to get started. Uh, we'll let AJ come in here in just a second. All right. All right. We got a lot of ladies waiting to hear y'all's perspective, man. Again, this is the barbershop. There's AJ. What's up, AJ? What's going on? I'm trying to get this lighting together. I'm yeah. All right, yeah. Look, look dark, but yeah, you, you, I, I ain't got that what you got right there. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good, man. You working he need, on quiet he need, storm stuff. He need those ready to love lights. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all right, man. So let's get started. I'm gonna introduce everybody if y'all don't know each other, but uh thanks everybody for joining us. That's on the live. Thanks to all my panelists. We're waiting on uh Kelfani he should be joining us in a little bit. He's probably somewhere bitch pressing a car or something. So <laughs> We'll let him cool down from that. But, man, I like to always int introduce the OGs first, the guys that came before us. So that would be senior man president, Mr. Jimmy Jones. He was on the second season of Ready to Love Atlanta. Ooh. Jimmy Jones, welcome to the broadcast, man. Thank you so much, brother. Honor to be here. Honor oh, to man. be 
honored to be the oldest man in the room. <laughs> Not by age, but by seasons. Experience, on, uh, right? Yeah. Seasons, yeah, that's yeah. what's up, man. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation to join us. Yes, sir. We're gonna get we're gonna get caught up in all the stuff that you're doing here shortly. I just want to interview, uh, I mean introduce everybody. And uh we're gonna go with Brian next. Brian was on my cast um from uh, Ready to Love Last Resort. We got a special bond. We was the only one sent and taken away from our home and our element. Shout out to Brian, <laughs> Mr. Super Carol. Brian, thank you for joining us, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me. I was on. jealous of that. Yeah. <laughs> and we were vice versa. We were jealous yeah. of y'all being at home because y'all got to be in your own bed, still mm -hmm. move around the city, do what you got to do. We was, we was captive, bro. Got to eat good uh, and everything. I, I, I hear you, but you know, <laughs> I feel like y'all was on a whole different show almost because yeah. of the yeah. level of access that you had, you know? Mm, okay. No, that's true. We did. Uh, it was a little easier. It was less distractions and a little easier to make any bonds. Like, guys, yeah. men and women, like, we all are real, you know, pretty relatively cool. And I think that was because we were kind of off to ourselves. We trauma bonded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trauma bonded. <laughs> Trauma bonded. Right, right. So speaking of AJ, AJ was the Houston cast after uh, right directly after Last Resort from Houston. Welcome AJ Johnson to the uh, to the cast. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. All right, man. So it's the barbershop. So this is just us guys talking, man. We're gonna do a little quick ready to love recap. Obviously, that's where everybody knows us from. So you know that's where. Uh, you know, that's that's that gave us the platform. So we'll talk about that real quick and just kind of catch up. But anything goes in the barbershop, man. This is like the barbershop. So no pandering, no holding back, no PC, man. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it 1,000. What the hell is that? Somebody had a lawnmower. Somebody had a hey, lawnmower. Hey, the lawn man cutting my lawn right now. Okay, okay. Look. Rich, he rich, he rich. Yeah, yeah, right. The lawn, the, the lawn man. He rich, All right, man. man. All right, so let's get into it. So let's let's catch up with Jimmy, man. Jimmy, you've been gone from the show most recent. I mean, the longest, <laughs> and uh, you know you were let go in the kind of the middle part of the season. I think you had a couple love interests. How's life been since Ready to Love? How's it changed your life, career, real estate? And I think you know. Tell us where you're at now, and are you in a relationship? Okay. All right. First of all, I, I appreciate being here, uh, ages and stages. You know, I really do appreciate the opportunity, man. But I mean. Just to get right into it, uh, ready to love. What that was whew, seemed like it was longer than it really was. But yeah. uh, every time Facebook reminds me of something, you know, from the, like during that season or whatever, um, I realized it really wasn't that long ago. But yeah, man, since then the show was really great in one aspect, which was it helped me really see myself. You know what I mean? I was able to mm -hmm. see myself and see some mistakes. That I, you know, more or less needed to. I think, I think that we all kind of saw ourselves and saw things about, you know, ourselves that we kind of wanted to maybe adjust or change or whatever, and just to be a better person for yourself. You know what I mean? But uh, am I in a relationship right now? I am in a relationship. Uh, I thought I saw that, man. Congratulations, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know, yeah, I didn't uh, want to speak too soon on. I want you. I want you to drop the news on that. No, nah, no, nah, it's cool. No, nah, I post. I'm supposed to be with my lady, man. You know, I, yeah, I, I feel like I'm 43 years old. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to take care of myself here much longer. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so, you know, you have to start planting that, those seeds when you when you find, uh, you know, a woman that seems different than what's going on out here in these streets. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to you got to lock it down. You know, you got to figure out how to, you know, be that person that is worth locking her down and. And you know, lock it down, you know. So, right. but real estate's been popping. Uh, real estate's really, really interesting these days with interest rates going up and with yeah. everyone looking to purchase a home and inventory low. And I know everyone hears all the nightmares and everything, but uh, there are still successful real estate agents out here. And I'm, you know, by the grace of God, uh, I'm blessed and fortunate to still be doing my. My real estate strong. Uh, when it's time to sell your home, call Jimmy, call Jimmy Jones. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, what's up, man. Yeah. And then so we're going to tell it. people where to find you. And I know you got some new projects coming up, so I'm going to definitely give you the platform to talk about that <laughs> before we conclude. So I know, um, so people who don't remember, you had on the show, you had a love interest for a little bit, uh, Kimber. And obviously you guys didn't end up dating. So are you, how's Kimber doing? Are y'all still cool? Or do y'all see each other? I know she's in real estate. 
or y'all just kind of see each other in passing? Or how are things with your cast and Timber and everybody? Uh, you know, I just unfollowed a lot of people, man. Like, I, I you know, so <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I know Timber is gonna keep it one hundred. Hey, social media, man. Listen, folks, social know them. media. I love social media because it gives you the ability to turn on switches and turn off. And so yeah. I turn off like a lot of things in my past that I feel like, you know, is going to hinder my focus on what's going on now, you know, and what's going on, you know, for my future. So I just, I, your guess is better than mine, bro. Okay. Got you. Right got on. You. All he right. said, I got a baby now. Hold on. Shoot. I had to follow <laughs> all of them. I ain't yeah, trying yeah. to see. Hold on. Hold on. I have a. I have a lady, not a baby. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, yeah, yeah, we don't want any rumors out there, baby rumors. Yeah. Right, right. All right, so let's follow up with Brian. Brian was on my cast. Um, he left uh, kind of middle or towards the end of the show. He had a love interest with um, Alex, and he was dating a couple other women on the show. They didn't end up, you know, dating after the fact. And then, you know, we had a reunion. Mm -hmm. A lot of things have happened. A lot of things talked about. People said you had a baby and all that kind of stuff on the way. You know, this is the first part we talk about ready to love. Anything you want to talk about, clear up. Do you have a, a new child and you're in a relationship? How's life? How's family after ready to love? Yeah, man. Uh, definitely had a few love interests. Uh, you know, you communicate with people. Uh, you get an opportunity to get to know them, see whether things work out or don't. Um, I do have a one-year-old. Well, she's okay. about one and a half now. Okay. Uh, Blessings. You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Um, I love being a father. Uh, she actually, I just got custody of my oldest daughter. Uh, oh, nice. She was, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, congratulations. Yeah. Real man, stand up. Right, yeah, right. yeah, really excited about the opportunity to do that. Take that seriously. I got engaged a few months ago. Hey, well, hey, congratulations. Blessings, man. Blessings, man. Hey, look, that's two. Look, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Everybody love men don't find love. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> right. Right. Come on with it. Hey, look, one thing about us when we ain't ready, we're gonna show up, but when we are ready, we're gonna be very intentional and show it. There I you like go. That. I like so, that. um, and that's that's been a blessing, you know. Um, I'm 37 years old, so I've made a lot of mistakes. Um Played a lot of games, had a lot of learning experiences, but once yeah. you get mature and you start really understanding what it really takes, um, and you find something, you ain't, you ain't trying to let it go. Once you start going, um, regarding regarding business, um, things have really been taking off. Got like three new children's books coming out. Got some sight work, kids books. I got some big contracts I'm working on in the school district. So I'm really getting to um, do what I love to do. That's um, normal, man. You know, and I'll be licensed as a therapist in about a year and a half. So oh, wow. um, I'm just super excited about everything that's going on and really just prepping myself to be a husband and have the whole family dynamic going because that's, oh, a, that's a totally different lifestyle than The Bachelor. Yeah. Right, right, right. Congratulations, yeah, I don't know man. about that pool table in the back background right yeah, there. That's like, right? Be let them know that can help add spice to the relationship, man. Eh? Yeah, yeah, already. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, so let's uh let's highlight my boy Cal Finney, man. Thank you, Cal Finney, for joining us. If you don't know, Cal Finney was on uh me and Brian's uh season, ready to love last resort. Catch everybody up, man. You know, me and you, we was in a love triangle with a young lady, and we right, we, right. we was even closer right. after that. Like, people always like like me and this dude is such a genuine dude, and it was never nothing like that. Like all of the guys on our cast got along. Me and Kel finally keep in touch all the time. We're always rooting each other on. Telling people where you are in, in life now. Um, you know, everybody saw the show. We got to talk about it briefly. You know, that you uh, you and Adriana didn't end up being together and you got back with uh, your previous lady. How's love, life, your kids, family, everything's going, man? How you doing? Man, to be honest, man, I can't complain at all, bro. Love, and love has been great. Relationship has been great. I'm still with the same woman. That's good, man. Um, so that's hey, that's out. free. <laughs> <laughs> We're breaking the statistics. Man, I need to take Tommy's job, man. <laughs> you do, right. you do. <laughs> We've been happier than ever, man. So that's, that's awesome, definitely man. been a blessing there. Good, um, man. You look like you're still bench pressing cars, man. What did you say? They look like you still bench pressing cars and. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, we, we moved off of cars, man. It's bulldozers now. <laughs> Damn. That's what's up, man. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. And then we got AJ. 
AJ's the, the, the latest uh, from um, he, you're OG now. There's a couple seasons that's coming going. Yeah, I was about to say, no, nah, we don't like the, I'm, th- I'm three seasons removed yeah, at this yeah, point sure. almost. <laughs> right. So if you yeah. don't know AJ, AJ had a love interest, um, Miss uh, Miss uh, Kyra from the show. I was about to say, stop. Come on now. No, no, no. I'm just trying to, I'm saying you had somebody, it was Kyra and you you were somebody else, but it's primarily Kyra. So, you know, that you all didn't end up together. Where are you mm-hmm. at now? Are y'all still cool? How's life? Are you in a relationship? What's going on with you after Ready to Love? Uh, Man, no, me and Kyra cool. Like, uh, you know, that's that's the road dog right there. You know what I'm that's saying? What's we up. good. Um, Man, as far as after the show, I, I did some music stuff. Uh, I got a movie coming out. I'm in oh, a movie. Man. Uh, I'm doing, you know, doing sound and doing music stuff for like a couple of little smaller projects, independent projects. So, you know, that that's what it is I'm doing as far as uh, whether or not I'm in a relationship. Uh, we, we still kind of bachelor s but we working okay. on it though we, we we got something cooking we we in that's there. what's up man hey four yeah. out of five ain't bad man we it's all right yeah, look, 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 like, i'm sorry i had to break it i had no to pressure break no the, pressure no pressure dude. Like, everybody everybody married engaged i said oh man dang <laughs> hey your own time the last man, time you time. interviewed me though i pointed you out i seen you though i said I know, oh right? you did. I said, I'm trying oh, to hide what it. y'all got going on? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's hilarious. All right, man. So let's move into it, man. Something that I've been wanting to talk about. I wanted to do this right when it happened, but scheduling conflicts. So, man, I I got I still want to talk about this Will Smith and Chris Rock, man. I got to talk about it real quick. See what y'all's perspective on, man. I have mine, but I want to hear y'all's perspective. And then I'm going to finally put this to bed. But I still want to hear from the homies on what y'all thought, man. Uh, so anybody want to jump in there first? Oof. I'm going to let y'all add that one first. I, I, I give All right, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Jimmy. Uh, well, I feel like everybody is definitely <sighs> tired, right. but I think people are right. tired for different reasons. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm tired of it because I'm a Will Smith fan, man. I mean, yeah. I literally have a Will Smith j- Bel Air jersey like that I was wearing at day parties like two summers ago, man. Yeah. I love Will Smith, dog. Like, you know, so he can really do no wrong to me. Okay. Um when it comes to his relationship and Jada, you know, that whole open relationship thing, I feel like it's hard to set boundaries when you have that you type open of yourself up to so much. Yeah. So yeah. him him reacting to Chris Rock was like it wasn't for Chris Rock. It was for every other person, every yeah, other man. And but I heard, I saw me right before I hopped on here talking about August Alcina is about to come out with a with a with an entanglement song and a tell-all book. So it's like you can't keep going around smacking like every man that did, like eventually you got to check the woman. Eventually you have to you and your woman have to be on the same page. And the worst part about the whole thing to me was that it just looked like, like if, even in my relationship, I tell my girl, I say, babe, just make sure I don't look stupid out here. I won't make you look stupid right, and, yeah, right. and don't, make, don't make me look stupid out I here. I like that. But yeah. it's hard to not look stupid in an open relationship. You know what <laughs> I mean? So I don't know, man. This, this new age love, ready to entangle, ready to love. I don't know what they ready to do, man. What you got, know. Brian? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I would say this, man. I think it was a lot of displaced emotions and anger. Yeah. Uh, like when I'm when I'm doing my uh, boys groups, I ask them, "Do you look at yourself as a function, or do you, are you able to acknowledge what's really going on?" So when I ask a young a young male, like, "What's going on with you?" Oh man, I'm grinding. I'm trying to go D one. I'm trying to stay on the grind. You look at yourself as a function, and you don't even acknowledge the fact that you're tired, that you don't know how to express yourself. That's why you're fighting. Or every time you get depressed, you can't even acknowledge it. So you're acting out in these different ways. And I think when you have all of these different emotions, like we experienced when we was on the show. So you got a bunch of people that don't know you. Okay. Yeah. They got everything to say about you. Yeah. You, got a, you might've known for 10 minutes that claim they dated you. I yeah, mean, yeah. you got all this stuff going on and you got to just kind of eat that. And eat you come to the boiling point. And as, a, uh, as men, we don't always have a safe place to really express ourselves and really release those things. So we bottle those things up and then the straw that break the camel's back is somebody who probably ain't even deserve it. You know? Mm. Yeah. So no, it's like, I agree. With, I agree with a lot of that. Yeah. You think all the things that's been going on, 
And you know, Chris Rock, cool. I, they they like homies borderline, but it got to a point where you know he just he was on the the end of that anger, and mm-hmm. it was just a bad situation. Yeah, yeah. Y'all hear Brian with the council talk? I tell you about Brian thinking about the council. Right, right, right. Put what you got? You got on the council? My question is: this was, 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 was a Brian. Brian. Uh, it's time like, like him being said. cool and, and them knowing each other for a long period of time or having been at least exposed to each other. I don't know what the quality of their relationship is, right? But I really can't think of not one single other comedian that that could have took place, with. right? Yeah. Like, not yeah. one other. I could not like take yeah. Chris Rock out and put yeah. another in comedian, comedian in, in, yeah, and, and then see that going like how that went. Um. My whole thing about it is, is uh, you know, whatever it is that they're doing in their relationship, because they never came out and said they have an open relationship. Yeah. There's always whispers and talks about them swinging and having an open relationship. I feel like Bootsy about it. You know, if if that's what it is that y'all doing, oh yeah, that you know that's that's what we doing. But right. he, everybody looked at that red table talk. That didn't look like a man that gave permission to nobody. And mm. even if he had. You know, she killed that by what she said afterwards. She was like, yo, can't nobody give me permission to do nothing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? With, with what it is that I'm doing. The same way she just came back and said, hey, I wish he wouldn't have slapped him because I'm not a woman that needs protecting. I'm like, yo, this yeah. man can win for, lo- he can yeah. Win yeah. for losing. I was going to wonder if y'all heard that part. Yeah, okay. The stuff yeah, that I she say it. out of her mouth, she doesn't realize how it makes him look. And you know what I'm saying, right. and that's right. and that's right. unfortunate because somebody that's incredibly, obviously, um, has crafted a persona, has crafted an image, has you know um, made sure to to put certain things out to the public as far as his family, as far as his love life, as far as whatever it is that they're doing, regardless if they got an open marriage, open situation or not, I couldn't name you not one person will, you know, it's all speculatory. But the fact, the moment that you have it be a situation where, you know, somebody that you're dealing with is coming out and they have something to say, and now I have to address it out loud, I just would have liked for her to address that differently. And she doesn't look at like how how much weight that that's had to be on him um and especially with you know where he's going we got a new one now i haven't looked it up but they say uh what steph curry and aisha curry you know they got yeah, a- i heard I- something I- about that oh yeah, yeah. i I'm think like, they come you know, for you right. at the height of your your relationships people come for i blame you. jada yeah <laughs> <laughs> they Kefani, about you have anything to offer on the red table talk right Kefani, what are your thoughts on it man i i mean i i know we all feel like we'll may have overreacted, but it was kind of for him, like you said, the straw that broke the camel's back out of everything that that's happened in between with them, in between their relationship and everything. Um, I don't feel like he, he really checked August. Like everybody's like, why didn't he check August? Why didn't he slap August? Because like he said, speculation, we, we more so thought that there was permission there for him to mess with his wife. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, when we looked over and seen the reaction of Jada's face after he made the jokes, yeah. whether he knew if she had alopecia or not, you know, he was like, damn. He, he felt like in between the rock and the hard place, like, damn if I do, damn if I don't. If I if I let her make it, how's my situation going to be when I get home? If I yeah. don't let her make it, you know you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, so, but he should. he. And with Chris, I mean... It was kind of done in the open. Everybody was like, why didn't he address him behind stage or afterwards or something like that? But it was done openly and in public. Yeah, that wouldn't have had the same said to him openly it right then have. in public yeah. rather than slapping him. You know what I mean? Yeah. It could have it could have been, he could have handled it a little bit more tastefully. Right. You know, um, in my opinion, that's, that's pretty much it. Man. Yeah. So it my thing on it, man, is it seems like Chris Rock was the vessel. Like it wasn't right. necessarily about him. He was, it mm-hmm. came out of him and then Will had all this pent up aggression and feeling he needed to perform and show that he's a man's man. And all of the talking points, all of the jokes, all of the memes, which sometimes they've opened themselves up to as well. Yeah. So we're way, we're nowhere near on that totem pole. But like Brian said, you go on television or you make yourself public figures, you open yourself up to the good, the bad and the ugly. 
Yep. And yes, he's been going through that a lot. And I'm sure even in his acceptance speech, he said, you have to smile through some things. So even mm -hmm. when he laughed, maybe he was smiling through some things. But at the same time, he looked at her. It's almost like she had puppet. She was moving the puppet strings yeah. to like to go perform. And but she came out and said, hey, I didn't want him to do that. But it's almost like he had to prove to himself and mm -hmm. the rest of the world that, listen, it's enough of this. And Chris was just the guy, because like you said, AJ, Chris is probably the one of the most unthreatening people <laughs> that you could ever see. Right. And to me, it was still more cowardly <clears throat> on Bill's part because you have a defenseless man standing up there. If you think back to the video, Chris had his hands behind his back. Like he yeah. had his hands, like he just had his hands behind his back, like laughing as he's approaching him. And no way did Chris even think he was a threat. Yeah, and then he just slapped him and then walked off. Like it's more so the privilege to think you could get away with something like that. Because to me, most guys, if you feel you're disrespecting my lady or my wife, all of us in here, I think we would definitely protect our woman. But right. she wasn't in any any physical danger, and it wasn't an immediate threat to her. And he didn't. We don't know if he had the alopecia if he knew or not. And he said he did. My thing is, most times I would have fired off a warning shot. To me, it's almost like the reverse of what he did after he slapped him. He came and sat down and said, keep my name out your wife's mouth. If you felt that touch, if you felt that upset, I would have said that first. First. And then right. I would have like, hey, keep my name, my wife's name out your MF and mouth. And that could have been on, on national TV, the whole nine yards. Yeah. And if there's something that from there, then you could have it could have popped off. Yeah. But to me, it, it was just like he was, was first really asked handy, man. He tried to prove a point. And if you hear, the last thing I'll say is you hear in his book, he said he always felt like he was a coward growing up. So I think a part of those childhood traumas just yeah. jumped out of it. But the thing about it is, is it, it doesn't have context, though. I think nobody really looked at it and said, OK, here's Chris Rock, a, co a, a comedian, somebody comedian. that's funny. Yeah. He made a non-funny documentary about black women's hair, hair what they exactly. have to go through yeah and part of it was you know the effects of wearing weave and wearing your hair braided and all of that which could lead to hair loss they talked about it in this documentary and me being the man that's dated a bald-headed woman or two in my lifetime you know what i'm saying <laughs> with the low face a woman that's gonna rock that type of hairstyle they have a different type of confidence because yeah. looking at yeah. it and saying hey I'm going to still be a woman. I'm a lady. And it's not attached to what hairstyle I have. And I, I think Jada wore it well. I think she looked she very great. good. And so, it, and so if, if you're Will and you see it and you like it and she's cool with it and flawless with it, yeah, I, I, I don't see him talking about G.I. Jane, which is a soldier, which in basic right. training, you shave your head yeah. anyway. And it wasn't even funny. Yeah. You know like, it wasn't, it wasn't, wasn't even that funny, that. to be honest. I think, I think it goes back to what Jim said, though. I, I think it wasn't funny, but I don't see where it's also offensive, though. I, I don't neither. see where it's Me offensive. Neither. Like, again, and I, we'll move on because we could talk about this all night. But at the same time, I like both of them men. I like Chris and... It was sad and I was upset and sad to even see that two black men on there having to do that because that's people's perspective. That's the only way we, we already have to solve issues, issues yeah. is physical yeah. violence, man, which really was unfortunate and sucked to me, man. So, uh, but let's move on. I know people are tired of talking about it, but with that, this is going to lead me into my next question. All right. My next question in dating or relationships. Do men, do we feel we have to prove ourselves to women? Like, because, again, was Will trying to prove his loyalty his to his woman because the way she reacted? Not just Chris, just in general, in the modern day world, do we feel we have to prove ourselves to women? Or do you feel they need to prove themselves to us? Ooh. That kind of goes both, <laughs> kind of goes both, way. goes both ways, man. You Let's know what go. I'm saying? Yeah. All right, yeah, what's yeah. that, I say it goes both ways. You know, a woman, a woman wants to know that when she's with a man, she's with a man. She's with a stand-up man. A man's going to have her back. You know, if a situation occurs. I had a homegirl, and she was married to this dude, and they were downtown in their city, and, and a dude tried to rob them and pulled a knife on them and was trying to take her purse. Her husband ran, bro. Oh, her, husband took off and ran, her husband took off and ran and left her there to fend for herself. <laughs> He was trying to go get the police. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that, that's a crazy situation, bro. That's, yeah. that's crazy. They, their relationship didn't end up lasting. Of course, their marriage didn't end up lasting because yeah. he didn't have his woman's back. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, a man wants to know that a woman has his because if, you know, she's in the circle, you know, this and that, something going on, they're talking about you or talking down on your name, you want to know your woman, you know, can address that. Like, this is my man. Hold up. He ain't like that. Or whatever, have your back in whatever type of way she may need to have your back. So yeah. I, I feel like it goes hand in hand. Okay. I don't I don't feel like that, yeah, that was a great point. I don't I don't feel like women or anybody should have to prove themselves like in terms of their worth. I feel like yeah. if you're gonna be with somebody, you should already like y'all should be past that, or else you should just be like in a relationship or not. Like if you're in a relationship, then you've already proven it, but that but I feel like Proving that you want to be in a relationship and not be single, I feel like women and men sometimes, I don't know, like I be telling my girl sometimes, I'll be like, now you can't be wearing them yoga pants and stuff to the uh to the store because that the IG you, joins the split. Yes, yeah, that <laughs> the that, split put, that put you on display as I'm not looking to be in a relationship. I mean, I'm in a relationship, but I, you know, if you holler at me and give me a compliment, everything's cool. So <laughs> I feel like I tell my girl, I'll be like, you know, prove to yourself really that 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 you are worthy of dating yourself. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that okay. so, so, so I don't feel like proving your word. I feel like if you're in a relationship, you should have already gotten past yeah. that part. You know what I mean? Right. So I guess, yeah, that's my that's initially exactly where I want to go with it. Do you feel as men we need to prove our worth, whether that means uh being what Will Smith did, physical violence, if we have to protect our woman, or do we need to feel, we need to prove our worth with our bank account or with what we have, oh. or what we can yeah, give them. Society or, or overall is, worth. Well, society, um, you know, you look on social media, you look at a lot of stuff, like society puts a lot of pressures. So I think it's, it's important, it's important to be strong and grounded on your core values. So you don't start going after, like when you look at the Russell Wilson, and the future thing. Ooh. Like yeah. at the end of the day, Russell not lame. He not no square. No. He just not no thug or he not no wannabe thug or he not no right. rapper talking about this stuff. Like, so we, they try to marginalize men. Like if you're not hyper aggressive, hypersexual, an athlete or something like, where do you stand? Like you gotta be in those phases. Like, yo, you can be 6'4", 220 and ripped up and wanna play the violin and be on the debate team and you're still a man. Right. Like your, your blackness or your manness is not in how you dress or the thing or the way you articulate yourself. So, Russell, Russell Wilson is like, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm taking that dude that's as big as California that can dance. I'll be looking like, yo, bro, why you, you, not, you can't be that big? <laughs> it just looked different the way he moved. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> too many muscles. Okay. But, I, I'm saying that to say, like, a lot of times, it's, it's, like, they make us feel like we got to um, prove ourselves. But I think when you when you got a solid set of core values, you understand who you are, what you represent, and what you bring to the table. So now you're just going into a relationship, like, are we equally yoked, and how can I add value? Like, as, as a former athlete, I want people to know whether I'm – some games I might score 30, but another mm -hmm. game that might not be the quiet. I might not have a hot hand, but I'm still going to add value by playing defense. I'm still going to add value by hustling or doing whatever. And I think that's the type of mentality. But we need that on both sides because you got these women that's a lot of times talking about a man should pay all the bills. If you don't pay all the bills, then I'm not going to listen. Like being um, so yeah, like, like you know, paying all the bills, monetary uh, support then equals submission or lack thereof. Yeah, but they don't understand that submission is really you just allowing somebody to take the lead. Like Pippen was submissive to Jordan because yeah. Phil Jackson is on record saying that he was a better basketball player, not a better score, but a better basketball player all around. <laughs> But hey, I'm from Chicago. He, he hit me in the chest. Right? <laughs> the, greater, the greater goal of the team, he submitted to what was needed for the team. Right. So, <laughs> so, so that's that's that's, di that's different though. If you plan a role, if you got a role, and and you communicate what that role is, I don't look at that as submission. But going back to and, and before we get way off into some sports metaphor or something, um, when you talk about. I'm, I'm going to answer the question first. Do I feel that men have to prove themselves to women? Um, yes and no. I feel as though as a man, you've 
you've amassed whatever it is that you have up until that point where you met that woman. You amassed whatever resources that you have, you amassed whatever experiences that you have, and you amassed whatever reputation that you have. A woman would be able to know really quickly where you stand as a man by the way that certain people or the way that people just approach you in general. I've never been in the situation where a woman has been with me, whether I've been with her or not, where I felt like a need to assert myself because I feel like I was being disrespected. That That's just me. I, I don't know what it is about me or the way I carry myself that makes that something where everybody knows that that's not okay to do. But I, I would liken it to the same type of way just because a woman might have on something that's scantily clad or yoga pants in the in the in the grocery store in the grocery store or wherever there are certain women that could wear whatever that you still know that you got to treat them with the level of respect and you can't approach them any type of way it, it extends beyond what they have on um I, I i'm trying to think of an example right now with somebody that you would look like oh man shorty be dressed up and and be kind of naked but she's still very classy at the same time. It yeah. escapes me right now. I couldn't give you a good example. They exist though. And then yeah. there's other women that they could have on anything and you, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna try them based on the fact of just, you know, how they present themselves. The same it's way I feel energy. like, not because of Chris Rock doing anything wrong or being bad and not having a good, a good reputation. I just don't see Will Smith doing that especially will smith i don't see will smith trying that with any other comedian you see jamie fox cat williams even kevin hart and kevin hart is like a foot shorter than hey, hey, kevin how, kevin uh what's in the cat williams did get beat up a little 15 year old he got that choke out. Out. <laughs> 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 he's 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 a kid he was high man he was high he was high <laughs> <laughs> you no know, hey Jay, like to some of your point i, I feel the same because but at the same time if I exude a certain level of confidence, a certain level of esteem, the way that I carry myself, if a young lady wants to approach me or anyone or vice versa to, I'm going to kind of see just how people react to you, how you act, how you can, because I think once you get the, the word prove can be very complicated. Yeah. When people try to prove certain things, sometimes you may step outside of your natural self and then you start capping or doing stuff just to prove. And then when you do that, now you're on the hook for that. And if you can't continue those things, that's mm -hmm. when you get struggle, strife, and discord in a relationship. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people do that because that's also, also like putting on a facade or a representative, basically. Okay. And I think the word prove and representative can kind of entangle with one another. Entanglement. <laughs> but uh, but so <laughs> I think that's a slippery slope because I think... I shouldn't have to prove myself once you're around me enough and we talk and we find out what things motivate one another and we're bouncing things, life perspective and goals and things of that nature. I think you're going to have a pretty solid picture of what you're dealing with and you will decide at that point to move further along with that person. That's yep. just kind of how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. But before you guys move forward, I want to ask you this and then I'll get your response after I play this clip. So, in that regard, let's talk about moving forward in marriages, relationships, or, or commitments. Who has more to prove, the man to the woman or the woman to the man? Don't give your answer just yet. I want to play this and y'all give me y'all's perspective, all right? Your question again is what? My question is, why do you not feel like men, well, why do you not think that men should prove themselves to women? Because you don't propose, we do. Correct. Okay. I can see that. Okay. Let and, me, let me, let me ask you, let me ask you when you go to, for a job interview, who, is it on you to prove yourself worthy for the job or is it for the company to sell you on the position? Oof. All right. So Kevin Sanders, I want to, I want to drop you a little bomb in the Look. <laughs> The I moment that you even put Kevin Samuels on the screen, you already know what you're doing, right? Look, look, look bro. I want to drop a bomb. So now, with that perspective, I wanted to hear you guys talk about his perspective. Who proved? So basically, what he was saying in a nutshell, I don't want to play too much. That women should have more to prove to the man because we're the one typically who decides who get married, or we're the ones in traditional roles who asked for the woman's hand in marriage. So 
That was my question, and I want to hear from you guys the perspective on that and who you feel has more to prove leading into a relationship and marriage. Go. I go first to get it out the way. Um, <laughs> so I can get in and get out, right? <laughs> but as far as... So I think a man has more to prove up front, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, up front, we the people that approach, we're going to go ahead and 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 say, hey, I like you, whatever that looks like. Uh, but we have to give a life vision, you know, because if you're going to lead, right, you, you have to say, hey, here's where I'm at in life. Here's where I'm trying to go. This is where I see you at in this particular, you know, journey or what it is that I'm trying to do, where it is that I'm going. And a woman has to buy buy into that so if the woman never buys into what it is that you're doing where you're going what your life's vision and purpose is there is no where she has to go ahead and, and, and prove anything to you but if she does if she says oh, okay I'm, I'm feeling you you fly you, you you did whatever you successful um then yes she needs to show that she can uphold whatever that vision and that purpose is that that man described to her and say, Hey, this, I can, I can fulfill whatever role that you allotted me to have. Right. Because again, like you said, it's going to be the man that proposes. And I, I feel as though, um, it goes back to something I say all the time. You know, a woman is inspirational. Anytime you have to do something for a woman through obligation, it, it's kind of, you know, it should never be because a woman is always going to be nurturing. She's always going to be looking at something from a space that as a man, I'm not. And that's, and that's inspiring. If somebody's doing something for you that you would have never thought to do for yourself, at least me, I'm going to look at it and say, Oh, okay, hold on. Wait a second. And now I'm, now I'm doing more. And, and if she's not inspiring that type of thing out of me, that, that's the reason why most women can be in the situation and not not get proposed to, not be married, because they they're expecting that because they're there, that that's enough. Okay, I'm, I'm with AJ on that one. Like oh. um, from the beginning, <clears throat> a man does have to prove to let a woman know that you know he's interested. I'm I want you, you know, um, and things of that nature. Once he once he lets her know what his thoughts are and his vision, you know, and the woman is in agreement with that, then it's for her to play that role, you know. But not for a portion of time, but for a longevity of time. Right. Because there's this thing. Oh, in my experience, I see, you know, women women can be tricky. You know, they they can. Uh, ask you questions and certain things while you're talking, you dating mm -hmm. to try to fit in to your lifestyle and fit into what it is that you feel like you want by asking specific questions. But that may not exactly be them, particularly be them, you know, so they may be playing a role just to fit in, even though that's not them. So eventually, and, and I call that wearing a mask, you know, so eventually that mask will come off and you'll see that that's not them in particular. And uh, for us, is for us to see, can we handle this person's issues? We all have issues, number one. Yeah, for sure. We all have issues. None of us are perfect. So is, can we handle this person's issues and knowing I want lifestyle to be this way? When I come home, what is our home for? It's our castle. It's our place of peace. You know, we deal with all kind of ordeals outside at work with this, with that, the other. You know, when you come home, you want one thing. You want a peace of mind. You know what I mean? You, you, 100%. you, you don't want to be arguing when you come home. You don't want stress. You know, all that's outside of the home. So if you don't feel like that situation when you come home can continuously, and although we're all facing ordeals or whatever, and there's going to be those talks and there's mm -hmm. going to be moments where there will be stress and, you know, where, where you have to get over humps in the road or whatever. But if if this constant, like, struggle, strife, argument, this and that, you have to ask yourself, can I deal with this for a lifetime? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? That's that's a real question of conversations you're going to end up having to have with yourself. Um, what you got, Brian? <laughs> he raised his hand. He's telling you two pieces. Hey, look, I'm going to say the, uh, a bigger mantle is on the man. 
and I only say that just getting spiritual on you. I mean, God told us to love our wives and he told the wives to respect us. Um, and when you think about the headship role, um, love, love is patient, love is kind. Like everything about love is a decision. There is an infatuation. You you <coughs> care about the person that you're with and you do love them and you grow to them because you don't love them when you first meet them. Y'all spend time, y'all all ooey gooey and all that stuff. And there's the infatuation stage. When you go to loving somebody, you're making a conscious decision every day to do what's best, right? What what I'm um I'm, I'm I'm choosing what's best for us. And you're working and like there's continuity within that relationship. And because I believe that greater responsibility is on the man because we're leading and we're leading at a level where she feels safe and feel comfortable with submitting, serving and loving on us. And we're bringing the best out of her. That does not negate her responsibility to us. So I agree in a sense with Kevin, um, I'm about to say Kevin Hart, what Kevin Samuels was saying, but it does not negate the aspect that we have to love. like. You know, when you think about men and women are just wired different. A lot of times we bump and hit is because there's too much ego, right? We're just wired different. That's why they're, they're told that we need more respect. They need more love because they're more emotional. You know what I'm saying? So I think that we have to get back to the aspect of really just going super hard and our strengths and our desires for what we want in that relationship and really making sure that we're on point, Um like not no 50 50 but 100 100 you know what i'm saying but right. I, I do believe that there's more responsibility on the man because you're the leader it's like if i'm picking a team they're gonna hold me accountable if i'm the gm and i'm selecting the players as opposed to me selecting a bum when i select the bum and they come mess my team and my organization up i'm it's not the same that, that there's not the, there's a responsibility on me because i picked that team as opposed to the person who came into the um organization the you know, there, there, is, there is more responsibility on us, B, as a man. We are the head and the leader, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that's where the woman comes in to where where she will have uh, what's Make the, the house a home. Okay. So yeah. let me ask you this, though, and I'll let Jimmy go. Well, oh, with, no. the, with, the woman, with the woman where <clears throat> we have that choice at the end with the woman, you know, if they're not living up to our expectations. Of course, we okay. are the leaders and we are right. the head. But you know they have to fall in place and fall in line because if not, we can choose somebody else. Careful, right, so yeah. cautious. <laughs> what yeah, the play prime. Hold on, Jimmy. I'm gonna let you go. Okay. But my question is to to Kelfani's point. Yes, we're the head. We are the leader. Sure. All right. True. So, in a team aspect, because relationships, team, marriage right, has right, to be a right. team, a partnership, yeah, exactly. because a woman comes from the side. From our right, rear, yeah. not too far in front, not too far behind. But at the same time, as that leader, you're typically picked first to pick the team. Yeah. Mm. Correct? <clears throat> Absolutely. That's team. the reason why it's LeBron mm. failed. It's not the Lakers right. failed. Exactly. LeBron is trash. LeBron, the Lakers failed. LeBron gets the number one vote. So he gets to pick his team. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, I'm sorry, not Tommy. Jimmy. Jimmy. No. So I was saying, like, it really, to me, I feel like in the beginning, like what, what I feel like all the guys are kind of saying is that, you know, it's well, there's a saying that says a man wants to chase you until you catch him. So uh, a man wants to chase you in the beginning, but then towards the middle, I feel like it's more so of the woman's responsibility to prove that. Because it's really like in Atlanta, it's it's quantity versus quality, man. Like the ratio, you know, in Atlanta, I feel like Ready to Love like was a good, my season was a good example of what it is in Atlanta because it's like, I feel like that there was, there was some, there was some, some good quality on there. But, you know, <laughs> if you look at it, women being outnumbered, you know, and then you, and then you couple that with the 80 20 rule, I feel yeah, like, I, I feel like in the beginning, a man, you know, that 80 20 rule, there's that substance, there's 80% of, 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 of substance and 20% of, okay, what else could be out there that I'm looking for that I'm missing? So mm -hmm. I feel like in the beginning, you know, a woman has to find a man that has that 80%, you know what I mean? And then towards the middle, once she finds that man, and then so now he has the responsibility of figuring out. Well, can he find a woman that's gonna give him that eighty percent, you know? And then, and then I feel like that's where they match, where they both. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where I, I guess they both kind of are. 
finding that 80% and not 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 looking for the 20%. You know, yeah, I feel like yoked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yoked. so that's the, the yeah. last part is the part that you gotta go ahead and, and talk about. People have had an 80% all day, but complain about the 20% that the they, 20 don't they don't have. have. And we, yeah. and we, and we don't I think do that's enough. people in general. Men yeah. and women. Yeah, that, that's people. That's that's what I'm saying. I didn't. I didn't did I say did I say men bro. or women do that? Yeah. I, I, I just I was you like, man, my bad. Oh no, but, I'm just saying we'll have that that 80 percent and then complain about the 20 percent that we don't instead of praising the 80 percent that we do have. Yeah. The right. problem is is usually the 80 percent is is the superficial frills type of stuff that may or may not get you into the door. Especially in your younger years, when you was yeah. in your twenties, the twenty percent is is what's happening now. That eighty yeah. percent is completely missing, yeah. you know. And you have to get to a space of where, when you mature and realize, because uh, everybody's fighting the battle of, of, you know, what they need versus what they want. I yeah. feel every man in this chat has met a woman before that's like, yo, this woman, I, I could go through life with her my life will be easy she would be able to add to my life and add to whatever it is that i got going on should be loyal should be there should be everything that i need her to be but however <laughs> it's it was something whatever that something was you know what i'm saying from the, the 20 percent that was more superficial yeah um that you was like yeah no nah, i'm not i'm not gonna be able to do it <laughs> that, that's that core values issue a yeah, lot of times yeah. like we we don't know ourselves enough we, we we're dating based off our wants and not mm -hmm. understanding what really makes a relationship like you would see these things on these magazines woman makes five hundred thousand fortune 500 owner why is she single well that ain't got nothing to do with dating holly berry why is she single how do we know she's emotionally intelligent how do i know that she's not temperamental how do how do we know that she doesn't know how to handle conflict that's what I've seen. Like what you say versus what people hear. Like people. That's part of that twenty percent, though. Like, yeah, oh, she got she paid. How, do they know how to effectively communicate their emotions, their wants, and their needs? Are they the person to be like, oh, you grown? You should know that. But I don't even know you like that. Yeah, yeah. You know <laughs> Let's work together. Like, right. you can be on some dumb stuff, and, All right. and you got that pretty privilege. If you look good, you always got somebody that's willing to trick or take a chance and be foolish on you. So you never get to learn that, you know what I'm saying? You really ain't what it is. You just look good. Preach. So a part of that, a part of that pretty privilege, let's let's segue into kind of what Jimmy was saying about, let's talk about the numbers right now. And I'll get into my question why I say, are men really the talent? What I mean by that is typically now you hear the statistics and analytics, especially in a city like Atlanta, Houston, Chicago, others were uh, DC, where women outnumber men by tenfold almost sometimes. And now you're looking at uh, college graduation statistics. More women are graduating from college. Mm. So that is the dating pool is a lot smaller for women who want to stay in their race and date black men. Mm -hmm. So now you have, you got your uneducated uh, or your thugs, or you got this and you got what I like to think we're all, you know, uh, well-rounded young men kind of a, in the same mind state. So with that saying, when man, we're look, us having- I won't what? let you do that to us, Rasheed. It's fifty percent of men. Uh, uh, what is it? Since you quoting Kevin Samuels, sixty-two. No, not, not quoting Kevin Samuels. I'm just going like <laughs> he quotes a lot of facts, though. So I'm saying, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so most men are in the middle class. We made it to a space of where one in fifty black people in general are millionaires. One in fifty is double since the 1980s. Mm -hmm. So uh, what that means is, is a lot of men are starting their own stuff. Look at you, you, you entrepreneur. My man writing books, you doing real estate, that's considered something. You don't have to go to school or sell no houses, but you could go ahead and make a lot of money doing that. You know what I'm saying? Kafani training, doing what it is that yeah. you're doing. I'm that. Real, no, what I'm saying is, I'm what I'm saying is the, the numbers are still the numbers as far as more women are graduating from college. So going For forward sure. than men. So what you're saying yeah. is dating what you hear a lot of women saying there's not enough. Where are the good men at? And I'm trying to show that these are all good men right here. So, but does that mean a lot of them don't talent? like the good men, though? I'm being honest with you. True. So, that's, what I mean, that, who's that, the talent? Though? Be, Are we the talent that, or the women bro, the talent? Bro, mm. that was the Brian talent? just said something right there. Brian was like, a lot of them don't like. <laughs> right. So, so an experience I've had is a lot of women will hope, dream, and pray for a good man. Yeah. And then when they finally get it, it's like, 
They don't know how to act all the right. time. You know, it's I not, know, not all I know women. Grown, I'm talking about my experience. educated, my well experience. paid women with bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, doctorates who want these things and they date a dope boy. I know. I was about to say a lot of times when once the woman have all that stuff, I I listen to them a lot of times. At least the people that I've encountered and talked to, a, a lot of the stuff that they want, it doesn't sound like a man. It sound like a woman, really. Mm. To be honest, it sound like Yo, you're a wife, right? So that goes all to say the kind of his point is okay. We're the ones who propose marriage in a traditional setting, which most women want that to happen. Yeah. If you outnumber us. Then who has the leverage, the women or the men? The man, the man, the man. Absolutely. Right. Hey, you, uh, you Absolutely. You have, you have it, it's, that's a mute point, really, to me. Like, if, if we talking oh, about getting to, into a relationship, so if we talking about getting into a relationship and and being able to have families, and we've already said like it's going to be on the man whether or not that relationship succeeds or fails. And we are the people that know that we selecting. What are we selecting? Anything? If if, if women are out here behaving the same, women have always been the determining factor of where society and where culture is. And you can see it happens really quick. It was what less than five, ten years ago that it would have been infallible for. A, I can't say it, but a, you can go ahead and kill me for it. But a woman with a tattoo across her chest—that was crazy. Never, you wouldn't yeah. have seen it. But now it's something that's to be acceptable. Or but, but even, AJ, even like, AJ, but if you're, AJ, if we're, hold on. I, okay, right. to AJ's point, it may be a mute point, but if you look at it in this holistically, let's say we're all Fortune 500 companies. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, which I like to think every man on this panel is a Fortune 500 company, okay? You have more people trying to work for you versus mm -hmm. if you were the owner of a McDonald's. You're going to have mm -hmm. more applicants who want that lifestyle to work for a Fortune 500 company because of what it can bring them to, in the totality of their life, period. So what mm -hmm. my, my point is, in that regard, yes, I have to sell you to why my Fortune 500 com uh, 100 company is good enough. I got to show you the benefits. I got to show you the retirement package. I've got to show you everything that is available to you if you come and work for my company. But my line is a lot longer who wants to work for the 500 company than who wants to work for McDonald's because McDonald's not going to offer you retirement. You can be like Calvin and try to own one in 20 years when you can work for my company and move up the ladder quicker. You have more people, but it takes more of an education and more of a proving ground for you to work for the five, Fortune 500 than the McDonald's. So that's all I'm saying as far as yeah. as the talent, where does it lie right now? Or do you no, still I, think I it's 50-50? Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with you there. What I'm saying is, is what we what men tolerate from women and what we seek out, people only repeat behavior that works. And mm. so whatever whatever you see women doing out here and that we complaining about is working somewhere and whatever women are complaining about that that men are doing it works well, now well, the, pro I, the problem the problem is is this we have way more ex I, I know i do i speak from personal experience i have way more experience peaking a woman's interest and dating a woman than i do making her feel safe and secure in a relationship a year later two years later three years later but that hey i'm cold in the first six months, the first <laughs> three months i'm a bad man you can't you, uh, unstoppable right look i'm the best thing since sliced bread but it but it's the skills that you're able to repeatedly work on and a lot of times as far as like real relationship skills we don't they're lacking mm -hmm. men and women yeah because mm -hmm. women can attract the man all day long they bad they look good they know how to dress or whatever but then you say all right cool what do you want to <clears throat> i had a woman tell me before you you ask hey what are your hopes and dreams are that's a little intimate isn't it what that's we not, just got finished being intimate what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> like so i can't know your hopes and dreams and right. all of this type of stuff but i can know and, and see other things about you that that should be a little bit more sacred but that's where you. we are right now as a society to where what we value is on display mm. okay. that's fair okay let's move on because i got two more topics and then we're going to get out of here all right, so that kind of we're all you guys are giving me you just segue right into the next topic, <laughs> right? I love it. Thank you. So, is society slash women trying to now emasculate men? Society, yeah. 
so, 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 society definitely, man. I mean, uh, especially with this whole gay agenda, man. It's just, it's like they they just pushing it and they going too far. Yeah, they going too far. Going too far. What do you think, Kelfani? I, I mean, just like it's a society, they're making things a lot more acceptable. You know, when we were coming up in school, you know, it, it just there weren't certain things that we were able to be taught and introduced to and shown. You know what I mean? Now they're talking about introducing certain things to, to children in elementary school, you know, making them aware of this. Disney is Disney is coming, trying to come with like homosexual content and stuff like that for, for the kids. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's just, it's just different. It's different. Society mm -hmm. is different now. A lot more things are, are more acceptable. Whereas, you know, the mom and dad should talk to the kid about this. Maybe then, you know, you're, you're learning about this on social media as a kid. And you got to remember kids now, three, four, five, six years old, have a tablet, have a computer, have a phone, you know, so they're able to see, see all this stuff and look different things up. And, um, you know, just just allow men men wearing dresses and, and different things that that weren't really just acceptable. We, I mean, we had movies when we were coming up, like Too Long Fu and stuff like that, where it may have, may have been some silly stuff going on. But for the most part, like it's it's just trying to really be embedded and then planted in our head, like this is acceptable now. This is what it is. You know, um, a man a man can act like a woman if he wants, or or you know, he can be a man. It's his choice. Men can now go into like women's restrooms and stuff like that if they dress like a woman. That's the, I mean, that's unacceptable. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's, it's just not cool. It's not it's not right. I and wish that they would normalize. I wish that they would normalize being a strong heterosexual man as much as they do being gay, man. I wish that there were more. I feel like just just with the interaction that I've had with younger uh, black men in particular. I don't know. There's like this weakness. Like I can just tell that they either they either because they come from fatherless or, or or fatherless households, or because they come from situations where they don't have a strong black man. Like they didn't pledge a fraternity, or they don't have like a like a strong black role model in their life. But I feel like back in the day, we had more people that we looked up to like more mentors or something man I, yeah. I, I feel like there's not that many as many mentors and people that really are that that we can trust yeah that we can trust with our youth and stuff like that man it's like it's like now i feel like they've tried to normalize a lot of dysfunction and things are just plainly out of order i'm gonna yeah. be honest with you um yep. I'm like if it, it, as a war strategy in the past when you want to take a society when you want to take a, you cut you cut Breaking off the men you go for the men. You can have strong men with character, with integrity, with a desire to lead that know who they are and who right. they are. Like we wouldn't have to have so many men to pro that we had more dads in the house. But strategically, there are a lot of things that are up against the men in the society. And I'm just mm. gonna be honest. Like I'm talking about systematically that have been done. Like and now, system. Right. You, got, you got people leading yeah. with bad intentions evil intentions that should not be re leading. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, granted, we don't want our kids to be so guarded to the point where they haven't experienced anything. But one thing about it is a child, if your brain isn't fully functioning to 25, if you're not allowed to drive until you're 16, you can't drink until you're 21, you can't make all these decisions when you get older, why are we allowing these children to be exposed to some of these things? It's not healthy for the brain. And right. your brain isn't able to be able to tell what this and what that is, it's just, it's just exposed to it. And it's arousing certain desires in children way too early, and it's just not healthy. I'm, I'll right. go mental health on this. Right now, that's cool. So now I want to switch that a little bit, but we're going to stay in the emasculation of men. So AJ said something earlier. He talked about with a woman who had X, Y, Z, all this stuff, sometimes they give a masculine energy themselves. So mm -hmm. now, do you feel now sometimes women who are more independent who have who have to have to be independent or more self-sufficient do you feel that they've taken on some of our roles and emasculate men in that regard absolutely that's that's what i was yeah. gonna go with it i don't feel yeah. it look like because gay men have been around since the beginning of time really you know what i'm saying so that's nothing nothing new and i you know what folks like to do in the bedroom i you know ain't none of my business however when it comes to 
in society, the amount of pressure that we put on men and then the the way that we have to approach it is different than a woman has to approach it. And I don't think that they ever really recognize that. Mm-hmm. Right. Because there's a social aspect to success. Right. A hundred percent. hundred percent. So women have that in spades. So when you add the, the social aspect of success together with the education piece that they're out educating us, and they they already have naturally that social aspect most men are lone wolves right and so everything that you're doing as a man you have to go get it on your own i'll be watching women in in you know in relationship with women that i've dated and i'm looking at certain things that's happening for them or or you looking at like then you know what happened that somebody want to do that somebody invested what somebody's doing this and you look at yourself as a man and said like those type of opportunities a few far in between for, for, for us yeah. based on how we approach it and the rules that we try to play in and, and live in, you know, because it could be a situation where you get slapped based on what it is that you say or, or whatever it is that's going on, or, or how we deal with each other. But as far as us being emasculated based on society's rule, we've always been the protectors and the providers. Right. And so if you're not protecting, how are you providing? And when you look at it nowadays to say this whole high value man and that and this and that and inflation, if you don't have a hundred thousand, if you don't make two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand, then you're going to look at yourself and feel less than some type of way. And you looking at all of the women that's able to do it and to get to those spaces and and then you dating them like I have. Like I would say that as far as earning wise, I'm well in the six figures. Uh, I, but I managed to date a lot of women that make more money than me, and I'm like, yeah, it's, it, it, and it's it's amazing, it's dope. But you have to be able to to be in that space of where what it is that I'm doing to protect and provide extends further than money. Mm-hmm. But if society said you can reduce it to just that, and then you can feel emasculated in that space yeah. because you don't know how and what it is to do. Because to Brian's point, to Jimmy's point. When do you ever see a man be masculine and be able to command his space as a man in the positive light? We've had a black president, and the thing that they had against him was is he was too passive. Why? Because he couldn't be aggressive. He couldn't. Yeah. He couldn't. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't be aggressive because yeah. then he would fit into a stereotype of being an angry, angry black, black man. man. Yeah. 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 So, so what I didn't I didn't have my first black male teacher into eighth grade, and unless you played sports. When do you ever get your reprimanding from a man? You don't. You so all of your reprimanding is is oh, happening some from some woman, and so you're either gonna have two types of men. Either you're gonna completely reject it, and now you're gonna be ultra vigilant and hard when you are approaching women and trying to be so rigid because you want to assert yourself as a man, or you're gonna be the man that's so used to women giving your your reprimand and trying to play into making sure and pleasing and appeasing and making that woman feel okay with you and proud of you that you're going to be a pushover it yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to really learn to to how to assert yourself as a man through, yeah, you know, and, I, and i think um society's pressures a lot of times put a monetary value on who's leading um which is unfortunate um because women have come into the work uh force and been ultra successful um, sure. I think it's it's been great. It's just that sometimes it, it's either way. Men don't always know how to handle it, and women don't know always how to handle it because mm-hmm. sometimes society has made us equate money with power. And unfortunately, when you get those things, you feel like you can leave at any time because you don't need this other person, yeah. and this other person can't lead you down the direction you want to go. And even well, if let's, let's, you don't let's even just go think, ahead and call that the, a woman. You've never been in a relationship where you was worried about or relying on what a woman had. Come on. So let's just call it what it is. We don't have to keep that, that one general. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> You've never been you. like, oh, I'm going to leave the relationship because I, I, I got my own money and I don't need this right. person. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Me. Definitely. I've heard that from women. 100%. 100%. Yeah. So with that being said, mm. You get those type of dynamics, and I'm just talking to buddies and friends of mine um, who get taught, like, anytime something comes up, if there's a disagreement, boom, first thing that they hear 
is, well, I don't need you. You ain't this, that, and the third. I can do this by myself, da 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 right? And so at that point, it's like, okay, if you say that now, you felt that way the whole time. Yeah. So it, it, it's hard for men to wrap themselves around that mind of thinking because at the same time, we want strong, educated black women. We don't want a passive hop on one leg, bark like a dog. Yeah. That doesn't, that's not, that's the 20% that we don't even want. Right. So it's a fine line and a balance. And I think those gender roles are sometimes getting a little skewed. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that's always the woman's fault. I don't think that. I think it's just societal thoughts that, that we just get implemented with all the time, all the time, mm-hmm. all the time. That's just mm-hmm. kind of my thoughts. But what women have had to step up and do a lot of stuff because of what we haven't been there doing. You know, I mean, like when I'm talking to the male groups, hardly anybody got a daddy in the house. And if they do, it's not a strong male um version of that um you know, you know so that that's that's a sad thing but a lot of times i think we don't articulate see, but, but hold on one second you see that all the time but mm-hmm. a lot of times society throws that out because we got five men on here all right and three of us that i know are daddies and great daddies strong yeah. daddies so yeah. that we're beating the odds right there with this panel but look right? i know but look but the, th- the sad thing about it is you, you know what i had to go through just to be in, in right. a situation i'm in yeah, i kind of do the emotional intelligence or the finance to even fight that, to be honest with you, that's the struggle. But I, but I will say this. A lot of times when a man saying he don't want a woman that's masculine, it's like we, we, we're we wired different. So with like Calfani said, I remember he said this, we was talking on, on during the casting, during the show. He said, man, after a long day at work, I want somebody that understands what I need. Like come down there, rub my back, like just be chill. I don't want to come home to some stress. Right. And that doesn't mean, that doesn't give me the green light to drag you through the mud. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. What I'm saying is I want somebody who's emotionally intelligent, who studies and loves me. And I do the same thing for her. She understands if if, if I need a massage, if I want something to eat or something like that, and I'm going to return, I'm doing that same energy. But mm-hmm. a, a man don't want somebody, I don't want nobody that's fighting me on everything. Where, yeah, we right. going, where are we going to go eat at? What are we going to do? What are we going to do this going, with the kids or something like that? Like, that's just contentious. And that's not teamwork. And a lot of times they equate, like you said, money to power. And, and guess what? Power is corrupt. And absolute power is absolute corrupt. So when you ain't got the right type of character, you put them with some money, you give them a, a big booty or something like that. They cute. <laughs> they got that pretty brother. Now you can't tell them nothing. Because even though I've, I've been a mirror for you in our relationship, and I tell you some things that I feel about you in love. You got somebody in your DM telling you that you're beautiful, and that mm. you're clean. And I'm like, let me fly you. Let me fly you out. Let me fly, let you, fly you out. Me, I'm taking you to Chile so we get that two for twenty two. We're not doing a steak forty eight on the first. Keep it real, B. Chili's baby. Or oh, cheddars, get them croissants. You know, oh, I hear women say they won't go to cheddars on the first date to go get something to eat, but but they'll go to Starbucks. Or stuff like that. It's like they got all these different things that really don't make no sense. And I just think people don't have the right core values on what they want to date. Because I chick say, I wouldn't sleep with a man on the first date. That's what they'll say, right? But I guarantee you, if you met him on Sunday, at a Sunday fun day, and y'all was talking for the week, and he said, hey, my job is flying me to Costa Rica for the thing, for, for business week. You know, I would love for you to accompany me. No pressure. You know, you're going... She going to bust it open for him now, no. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, because of the situation. You know, so they put these themselves in these situations they, where they feel like they really can be, they make us feel like they can be bought. You know what I'm saying? Right. They, it's like all these, uh, what is it called? Smoking mirrors. Yeah. And yeah. all of these things, these low-hanging fruit that's being dangled, and we, we can't get to the core and the meat of what it really takes to build a relationship. Ooh. All right. That's great, man. So a lot of this stuff, uh, I got this question and I might have time for one more that a viewer asked. Um, but a lot of times these are, you know, we're hearing all these buzzwords you hear, you know, this is another buzz buzzword you hear a lot of times, to- toxic masculinity. And a lot of people want to attach that to what Will Smith did or what others did. And it sound, t- sounds like we hear it a lot in our community. Do you think, is it a real thing or is it just now being brought up now that it has a, now it has a buzzword and a name, people like to just throw that out? Do you feel it's a real thing? If you do, how do you feel about it? Give me your thoughts on to- toxic masculinity. I know about that. What is it? So basically, in essence, they, they say what Will Smith did was the old way of how men show that they're strength. Like, that's toxic. You shouldn't have to, because we're going back to the old gender roles, right? Oh. Uh, 
this I'm going to act out this way. I'm going to settle my disputes with violence versus conversations versus decorum versus things like that. We wanted to Morse to go back to an old traditional knock your the caveman, knock the woman over the head, drag her back to your cave. And, you know, everything goes how I say it. And that's how we run the world. So a lot of people saying that that's something that's kind of rearing its head again because of the outward side of, of how should I put this? Society is trying to get us to dummy that down. And it's kind of a balance because it shows a lot of, even in foods and hormones, men are losing more and more every year by statistics, use, losing uh, testosterone and losing it. So they're talking about, okay, we're now mentally trying to do that to subside us having lack of testosterone and as we get older. Does that make sense? Ooh, that that sounds like emasculation again, man. That sounds like, you know, like, <laughs> what's, what, what's wrong with men being aggressive sometimes, man? Like, right. what's what, like, you're you being know, toxic. <laughs> and, uh, I feel like I feel like people people can throw that toxic card, kind of how people sometimes use the race card. Like I feel like whenever it's convenient, they can use that. But in, in actuality, man, uh, I'm kind of old school, man. I know I'm generation. Uh, I don't even know. I'm right after baby boomers. So I was generation whatever that was X or whatever. But I feel like men. This like this gonna sound crazy when I say this, but I feel like sometimes it's okay for a man to sometimes lash out sometimes, man, because it lets people know that we are men, like like we are authentic. Like sometimes you do lose it, sometimes you do right. lose control, and I feel like that's why we need feminine that feminine like that feminine like person in our life sometimes to call you know to just be that right. balance. Yeah, you know let me let me let me let me say this though real quick. So some might say, Jimmy, that you saying that you don't want your girl to go to the grocery store in the yoga tights may be toxic masculinity because there's they, some people. No, seriously, some people would say, well, why can't she go? That's what she went to yoga in. Why she? Okay. To the store? All right. And to that, home? and to that, I'll say it's one thing for me to say I will beat your ass if you go to the grocery store and do that, <laughs> and so, or or if I say, hey, baby. You know, but if you like explain it to her and have a conversation, I feel like love is communication, man. I feel like whenever you're not communicating, then you are building things in your head that will be, that aren't there. That if you just talked about it, you could break down those barriers. But I feel like the toxicity comes in when you don't communicate it effectively to your partner. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Anybody else that want to add to that? Um, is toxic masculinity a real thing? I I just think toxicity is a real thing. But all right, I, I'll speak to since we've already kind of spoken to it. I think where we lack real men role models in society, and you lack the ability to see men be powerful, strong, uh, intelligent. Um, everyone we've always seen that's that is either been one of three types of men. It's either been the preacher, mm. um, and you can either shun or reject that based on how you know you were raised. The coach, if you are able to participate in sports early, or mm. it's going to be somebody in the streets. There's going to be some street guy that you know is going to. Because name me another man that has any type of level of respect in society as a norm. And yeah. you should know this, Brian. And this probably happened to you. You don't have to talk about it. I always liken this to some black man being the substitute teacher at some point in time. Uh -huh. And y'all in the whole class act a fool. This dude could be Calfani, six, five, six, eight. The kids don't care. You're not yeah, my teacher. Right. You're not Mrs. Jones. Mrs. This is Mrs. Jones' yeah. classroom. We, we've Jones been class. we throwing paper balls at you. What you more respect for Mrs. Jones and Mr. Jones? And and then when some older teacher comes in the room, whether it be the principal, or whomever, some woman, and she could just stand in the doorway of the class and look at everybody, and everybody get in their chair, and she tell everybody, "Hey, look, y'all, mama raised y'all better than this. Y'all gonna go ahead and be quiet for this man for the rest of the class." And then everybody does it. I feel as though. Toxic masculinity comes 
as the kid that's in that classroom that sees that big man that doesn't get that level of respect and he feels like he has to be more over the top than everybody else he has to slap everybody he has to to go ahead and, and beat up everybody that doesn't show him the level of respect that he wants because he hasn't seen anything else right so and i don't I know if it's toxic masculinity right. i just think it's just just a lack of role models mm. perfect right there that perfect aj because sometimes us growing up we've seen certain role models like i didn't come from anything i had a single mother I seen the dope boys, I seen the athletes, and I decided to go with the athletes. I could have very easily went with the dope boys. I got, unfortunately, guys in the penitentiary now. I got guys six feet deep. But what I'm saying is sometimes we have to change some of those. Like, I think you can't call everything toxic, and masculinity is toxic at certain points. But at the same time, how many of us was taught to have a bunch of money, multiple women, dating a bunch of women, and running chicks and being a pimp that's so being amazing that we celebrated that you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This, this is a big issue we got too many women trying to tell men how to be men it's okay. too many women trying to tell and granted a real man yeah, we, we have these <laughs> yeah, different standards that. for manhood that are unhealthy like i talk to the kids I'm like like who cares if you can't fight yo like you smart because the dude that's smart is gonna go somewhere like not the dude that know how to fight um, right. Or they make you think like you got to have a bunch of females or something like that. You know, it's, it's a bunch of different things that are just toxic traits that they try to infuse on us. And truth be told, it's in, it's pushed by women. You know why? Because men don't do things for men. They do things for yeah. women. Yeah. When a dude go flexing at the club, being extra with all these chains or dressing this way, doing all this stuff, he doing that because that's what I'm pre- like somebody said earlier. People only do things that work. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know these rappers call these women the B word all the time, and they sing the song. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like dudes are doing things to impress women. We are socialized, we are sexualized into these different things. So at the end of the day, it like we have to have a new standard for what manhood is. Think about it. There's still a battle on whether Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson is square in future. Is they yeah. they, they, they like, they like, like the a Like people want to talk down on on dude. Yeah. Of, yeah and that's and that permeates through our community and it's yeah. unfortunate like why can't they just be different men and she's happy with the guy she's with and he's happy with right. her and he doesn't do what he does and he doesn't do like like we all have different standards of what motivates us and what we decide to put out there to the world because we all have different life experiences yeah, like exactly. business the to woman yourself. has always been the last piece though so i'm gonna take it a step further than what even what brian went Okay, yeah, you might do all of that to get the attention of, of the woman, but it's still to get social status as a man from other men. You've been somewhere. Look, it's either one or two ways. You either got to have the most women of the coldest. That, that's the way this works. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Either either Brian got all of the women or he got the coldest yeah, ones. <laughs> and, 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 that, and that's pretty much it so like you I got amass cold. everything else to get the woman the woman is the last piece so you got yeah. your, you got the car you got the job you got the money you got whatever yeah. and then you get the lady and it's like oh, okay she put the stamp on you you know even mm. if it is so much so much so that if you was dressed nice didn't have anything but you had a a, a woman or people know you to have women people will assume certain things about you as a man based on the woman that you with. Even yeah. Barack Obama said, he's like, yo, they didn't like me, they liked her. And they yeah. wanted to figure out if a, woman is that cold, house. if a woman is that cold that's gonna be with this man, there's something interesting about that man that I need to know Look, about. AJ, think about this on the reverse, cause you have a great point. Yes, you do that for social status amongst men, but we're doing it for women. At the same time, that same guy with all the women in all the coldest, who else is he appealing to? The other, women. Women. the other women, the other women. So that's not our fault. <laughs> like, no, like, hey, hey, he's trying to get me. I'm just, look, I'm, I'm just doing me, baby. I'm just. <laughs> that's not our fault. So, hey, so what? So what does that mean? Women, women, a lot of times are attracted to strength, leadership. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, masculinity. Oh yeah, the shiny object. Yep. they like right, power. Right, right. They like structure. They yeah. like they don't want they don't want the guy that don't nobody look at. 
She got a full point oh, out. but she dating a dude that read with his fingers because he knocked people out. I'm telling you, I see it all the time. I'm like, dude, like you, you he ain't got no sense. You wonder why you can't get him to do right, but he got he got he got mental issues, but you you like him. You know what I'm saying? Because he got tattoos, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, man. Thank it do make you feel insufficient if you're not making a certain amount of money yeah. and stuff like that. That's yeah. why it's important. To Last about. question from a great friend of mine. She's like a sister to me, so I gotta ask this question. Then we out off to this one, man. All right. I'm gonna let y'all read it. Free vacation advice to women. If don't go. <laughs> so here's the deal. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm cheap. It's the money. Is it still a vacation if we're not gonna have sex? Right. Is it still a right. vacation? It's it, 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 not a vacation. You can't eat if we ain't planning to get on the balcony. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> <On the balcony. laughs> you need to go with your home girls. <laughs> <laughs> so go on, take a girl, take a girl's trip. <laughs> right. So her overall question, I couldn't put it all was okay. Why do men start? hesitating or backing up being less interested when sex isn't at the forefront also if they plan to go on a vacation together how does she she wants to tell him beforehand so he's not upset or misled when they get out of town she wants to know is it a good way to even tell him that or have that conversation or <laughs> so go her plane ticket in her state. Oh, well, what are we doing? We splitting it. Like, if she do that, she can do whatever she want to do. No, she, we, go trip. we go Dutch. Right. We go Dutch. We go Dutch. Go <laughs> Dutch. So, okay, she let's do say she want to do on the vacation. Okay, let me ask this. Let me just flip it. Let's say you come up with it. Hey, babe. Hey, you know we getting. You know we getting some relationship. I'm thinking. Hey, let's go to. Let's go out of town for the weekend. On me. She's. She accepts. <laughs> And then a day later, she's like, you know what? I think about it. I really want to go. But then what's your reaction? If you all so I, I think this is all about a, 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 what's a man's level of resources. If you make it to a certain space, you know, a vacation, what, three, four thousand, five thousand. You know what I'm saying? On, on a higher end, you're getting closer to six, seven. Yeah. If, if you make that in a week. Are you really tripping? You're not tripping. But if okay. you if it take you two three months to make that to go on the vacation, then it's a little bit more substantial. Mm -hmm. right. Men always but, but, hold on, hey, hey, I gotta call you out though. You just said pay your own way. You think nothing about money at first, so you could be. Sure. But but I gotta bring it back into context. Yeah, I gotta point, at though. least I gotta at least fight for the women a little bit. <laughs> only men only men that aren't making money in a substantial fashion is really worried about that. It, it's only been a few times in life where I've been able to live and do things strict. And women get that this is the thing. Women get to live this way often. And they don't realize that they get to live this way where they only <laughs> where they only worried about the experience. They only are doing stuff based on what the experience is. They don't have to think about what the financial space, what the financial issues are, what the finances mm -hmm. are for that. Women be doing stuff and you can tell like, oh, that's how much that costs? I never knew. Like, I yeah. never yeah. knew how much this costs. A man could I've never, never operate like that. Men, we could never operate like that, ever. Call us cheap. <laughs> ever. All right, anything else to add to that? Stay home. <laughs> Stay home. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you guys so much for joining us, man. I appreciate you guys. We're man. right at an hour and a half, but these conversations go so well, man. I just keep going, man. I appreciate every guy on here, y'all's perspective. I'm going to give each one of you the floor. Tell us where we can find you. Tell us all your new projects. Just tell us what's going on, how we can keep up with you. Let's go with Jimmy first. All right. Mark your calendars for Sunday, May. Is it May 8th? Sunday, May 8th. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm associate producer for a new show called Love Match Atlanta, airing on Bravo TV. Sure. Praise wow. God. Sure. Yep. So, and, and sure. praise sure. God, I'm associate producer and on, on a couple episodes as well, but not as looking for love. Um, I was just on there basically as myself, man, which was great, man. But it was a good opportunity to work uh, behind the camera on a, re on, a, on, a, on a new hit reality TV show. Uh, so, Love Match Atlanta, May 8th at 10 p.m. on Bravo. Please tune in. Um, and I'm just happy to be here. You know, I'm just happy to still be doing what I love in life. And um, I appreciate your time. Uh, and uh, Rasheed, thank you for having us on the show, man. 
I appreciate you, brother. My man, I appreciate it. All right, AJ, what you got, man? Uh, man, uh, my social media is all the same. Uh, Incanations, I N C A N A S O U S. Uh, look out for Candy 2, it's going to be coming out soon in the summertime. Uh, I'm in that. Um, I'm gonna be having some music projects happen, uh, probably about two of them that's gonna be coming pretty soon. Uh, projects that's already out with Rochelle Gemini, you could check those out on all streaming platforms. She did a a poetry album that was nominated uh that got into the later rounds of nominations for the grammys and we did a a, a hip-hop project as well so you know check both of those out um that's rochelle gemini um that you can go ahead and and see both of those projects um and then man we're gonna go ahead and kind of see what a year takes us we we in the first quarter first quarter done second quarter on the way uh we we just getting started that's dope, man. That's nice. dope. Kelfani. Hey, hey. Same old same, man. You can find me on IG at Cali underscore fit pro. Um, my website is califit.com. We have a huge event in Houston, June 18th. Um, it's for mental health awareness and suicide prevention. Wow. We did it a couple years ago before COVID, and it was a big hit, big turnout, slim thug. Everybody was there. Um it's a uh, it's a fashion show. It's called Fashion Fitness Swim. Um, a lot of if you guys show up, everybody show up. It's, there's gonna be food, drinks, or there's like I said, fashion show, runway, everything. So it's gonna be live June 18th out here in Houston. I'll be posting on my page coming up soon. Um, still pumping with the real estate. I just closed on a few more properties recently. Awesome, that's what's up. That's what's up. Working, working on working on getting in a commercial space soon. So all right. We're gonna be building some apartments here, hopefully, yeah. hopefully soon. More sooner than later. Well, that, so uh, uh, like they said first quarter here, we we attacking full speed ahead. I love it, man. You got any you gonna doing any uh bodybuilding, any competing coming up or you oh man, I'm gonna you? be competing in the summertime. So okay. uh I'll be right now I'm bulking. I got up to about 255. I'll uh, I'll be cutting yeah. <laughs> I'll be exactly. cutting down soon. I'm, <laughs> I'm still pretty lean, so I'll be trying to get ready for the Mr. Olympia again. Okay, for nice. the end of the year in December. Perfect. I love. How it. tall are you, one, one, baby? How tall are you? Six two. Six two three fifty five. Two fifty five. Oh, a side of two fifty five. Still got the six pack, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, send me. Make sure you send me the info on that uh, awareness event, man, for sure. All right. And Brian, last but not least, what you got, man? Um, <clears throat> Super Carol on Instagram, S-U-P-E-R-C-A-R-R-O-L-L. Um, my website is Brian Carroll and Associates. Um, look out. I, I got online mentoring. If you're in Houston, we do a lot of mentoring in the school districts and individual and online for young males. Um, got a lot of daddy-daughter events coming up. We're going to be getting together with our daughters, doing hair, Um whether we're cooking with them, with the chefs coming in, we're going to hit up Cali. We're going to do some workouts. We're going to do some yoga, anything, getting dads to connect with their <laughs> daughters and get more on this, you know, expressing ourselves and building those relationships and with the sons as well um, with my program, Athletic Intelligence. Um, we're going to be doing a tour with different schools um, with player development, uh, college trips coming up this summer, man. I'm really excited about everything. Um, definitely appreciate me having um, appreciate you having me on, man. And, uh, you know, it was a blessing. Dope, man. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. And as far as me, um, same old stuff, man, just working hard, just trying to get to it. Um, me and Simone do have a couple's trip coming up in Punta Cana. So check our sites and websites for that. I'll put the website in the description for that. Um, love for y'all to come out for that. I think that's in July. Don't remember the date right off the top of my head. And hey, keep watching Agent Stays. We got more great content um, coming from you guys. And we thank you for the platform. We thank you for everybody watching. Like, comment, and hey, have a good night. After that, we'll see you in the next one. Appreciate you guys. One love.